Hi everyone, my name is Philip, and today I will be talking about our paper Centrality Analysis of the Lightning Network. This work was done by myself and my colleagues Klaus Dicher Fürster, Christian Decker and Stefan Schmidt. We have conducted a large empirical study on the popular lightning network to shed light on the aspect of centralization. In particular, we are interested in which direction it has developed over time. Our motivation for conducting this analysis is that payment channel networks such as the Lightning Network ideally should maintain a high degree of centralization in order to mitigate liquidity or information bottlenecks as well as various attacks such as on path attacks. The blockchain technology which underlies one of the most known cryptocurrencies out there such as Bitcoin and Ethereum enables mistrusting entities to cooperate without involving a trusted third party such as a bank. However, in the case of Bitcoin, the absence of this third party and Bitcoin's growing popularity have given rise to a scalability problem, where only a few transactions per second can be processed. This problem needs to be solved in order for Bitcoin to be used globally and hold its position as one of the top tier cryptocurrencies out there. The Lightning Network promises to mitigate the scalability issue of Bitcoin by allowing users to perform transactions off-chain, meaning that transactions are not published on the blockchain itself, as broadcasting these transactions is one of the main factors for Bitcoin's low performance. In the Lightning Network, two users can create a so-called payment channel between each other in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion and then almost instantly transfer money between each other. Users and the corresponding channels can be seen as a graph in which the users represent nodes and the channels represent the edges of the graph. The channels are bidirectional, meaning that money can be transferred in both directions. What's more, payments can be also routed through multiple users along channels to their final receiver. Of course, users in between the sender and the receiver need to forward these payments. To create an incentive to do so, each user can collect some fees for forwarding them. In this example, Alice wants to pay Charlie but has no direct channel connected with Charlie. Therefore Bob is used as an intermediary to forward the payment to Charlie and Bob therefore collects some fees for doing so. <coughs> These fees can vary in size and therefore a gossip mechanism is used to allow nodes to discover the cheapest routes to send their payments through. As the name may imply, gossip messages are propagated through the network to announce specific events. Therefore, all nodes have a contemporary view of their network. We have collected around 8 million of these gossip messages, consisting of more than 400,000 node announcement messages, which are propagated through the network by nodes to inform other participants either when the node is created or it updates its information. Then we have collected over 1 million channel announcement messages. These messages are sent when a channel is created and they contain information such as the short channel ID, which is a unique identifier for each channel, as well as both node IDs of both channel endpoints. And lastly, we have collected more than 6.4 million channel update messages, which, are, which contain important channel parameters such as the fee-based parameter that is necessary among others for calculating routing fees. To be able to contain such a large uh, to obtain such a large amount of data, we have deployed a number of nodes to synchronize their view of the network topology by collecting and carving these messages. So based on these messages, we have built a program called the Lightning Network Time Machine. The Lightning Network Time Machine is a tool written in Python which is able to reconstruct the state of the Lightning Network at a given point in time. It does so by deduplicating these messages, meaning the duplicates are removed, then ordering them by their timestamp and then replaying them in correct order until the design point in time is reached, creating a network which is close to the one in the past. We have utilized the time machine to recreate the network at seven points in time, dating from April 2019 to January 2021, which we ordered by the timestamp from T1 to T7. So now we have almost everything we need in order to examine the centralization in the Lightning Network. 
To do so, we utilize a measure called the between a centrality. In between a centrality, for each node pair in a connected unweighted graph, there exists at least one shortest path between these nodes, such that the number of edges is minimized. For weighted graphs, such as the lighting network, where channel routing fees represent edge weights, the sum of the edge weights is minimized. So the measure captures how much a given node is in between others, and thus how central the node is, and consequently how much information is flowing through the node. Besides between the centrality, there are many other interesting centrality measures out there. However, between the centrality takes all nodes of the network into account to calculate each score, as opposed to, let's say, degree centrality, which counts the number of edges incident to a node, hence providing a more local view from a network's perspective. A high between the centrality indicates that many routing paths are flowing through only a small subset of nodes, therefore leaving much of the information controlled to them. It also raises privacy and vulnerability concerns as such nodes can misuse their power or can be target of attacks that could potentially disrupt the network. We utilize our reconstructed lighting network at different points in time to measure the between the centrality, which in turn provides us with insights on how it has developed over time. Has it become more centralized or is the opposite the case? We calculated the between the centrality of each node based on the formula for routing fees and three uh, uh, different but realistic transaction sizes, namely 0 0.0001 Bitcoin, 0 0.01 Bitcoin and 0 0.1 Bitcoin. By using different transaction sizes, we hoped to see some differences in the between us distribution among the nodes. We start by examining our oldest network snapshot in April 2019. We do not include nodes with a between us centrality of zero, as they only would represent leaf nodes in the graph, and have no further meaning for our analysis. We can detect that all transaction sizes have a similar impact on the centrality distribution of the nodes in the network. However, this is most probably due to the overall lower number of nodes in the network at that point in time, and therefore there is also a limited number of paths that can be selected between these nodes. According to our data, there are only 346 nodes in the network at this point in time, opposed to 1361 nodes in January 2021, and of course, without taking leaf nodes into account. We now look at the between the centrality distribution in the network in our latest timestamp in January 2021. Now we can see that transaction size indeed has an influence on the centrality distribution of nodes in the network. In the case of 0.1 Bitcoin and respectively 0.01 Bitcoin, there is almost no change in the centrality distribution among the nodes. However, in the case of the smallest transaction size of 0.0001 Bitcoin, we can see a significant shift. A possible explanation for the shift in distribution is that for small transactions, different routes are calculated. The next possible, uh, the next noticeable observation is the high jump around the 4000 between the centrality mark for all three transaction sizes, meaning that many nodes at this mark share the same or similar between the centrality score of 4000. A possible cause can be that these nodes are are all positioned on a specific shortest path and therefore share the same centrality. After looking at the between us distribution based on different transaction sizes, we now move on to examine if there is a significant distribution inequality in the network. To measure inequality, we utilize the Gini coefficient. Gini coefficient is an economic measure primarily used to point out economic unfairness or better to say it, inequality within a nation or social structure. An unequal distribution in a network would mean that only a small subset of nodes is in a control of a large portion of the network. <coughs> Looking at April 2019, 
We can see a good example of an un unequal distribution where 90% of the nodes only correspond to 30% of the cumulative betweenness of all nodes. A fairly uneven distribution in our view. In a perfect world where all nodes share the same betweenness, the distribution would look like the blue line. However, this is not the case and consequently this indicates an extraordinary high network centralization where 90% of the shortest path in the network lead only through 30% of the nodes. But how has it changed since then? 21 months later, on January 2021, now 90% of the nodes make up for slightly more than 10% of the betweenness. Or to put it differently, 10% of the nodes participate in 90% of the transaction route, which is even worse than before. Subsequently, we can conclude from observation that within 21 months, the centralization has risen by 20%. We now take a look at how much the inequality has risen over the period of our examination. The Gini coefficient is slightly increasing each timestamp, with the biggest jump of 6% being between April and August 2019, or T1 and T2. Seeing this, we can come to the conclusion that the Lightning Network has become more and more centralized over the past years, having only a few very influential nodes through which most of the paths are routed is not beneficial for the robustness of the network. These nodes can be targets for attacks and could disrupt the network in the case of failure. But not only attackers could exploit the situation, but also the nodes or rather the individuals controlling these nodes. Lastly, we look at the performance of the top most influential nodes based on their centrality score which we call rank here. So the node with the highest score has rank 1 and so on. Many top nodes in our latest timestamp were already present in the past. Take node N1 or node N7 for example. From timestamp T1 which is in April 2019 to timestamp T7 in January 2021, these nodes have always been under the top 20 nodes with the highest centrality score. It is also interesting to see that some nodes which emerged more recently, such as node N4 in timestamp T4 or April 2020, already started with a high centrality, centrality or gained it over a short period of time. Such highly interconnected nodes are often hubs from big node providers. Newly created nodes from these providers are often configured to automatically connect to such large hubs to increase their interconnection between other nodes of the same provider and also to make it more convenient for users so they don't have to create channels manually. In conclusion, we have collected a large dataset consisting of over 8 million gossip messages which we then have used to rebuild the Lightning Network at specific points in time using our Lightning Network time machine. We have found that there is a trend of increasing centralization and a high level of inequality in the network, which means that only a handful of nodes participate on most transaction routes. We have also shown that the level of centrality also depends on the transaction size. Lastly, we have uncovered that some nodes remain in the top ranks over the examined period of two years, which are mostly large housed by known node providers. And with that, that's the end of my presentation. Please feel free to contact me with any questions you have about our paper. And I look forward for to hearing from you. We also want to especially thank the Research DAO and Harmony for funding this work. Thank you.